Hey GED students, Lisa sent me this problem from the slope as a rate of change lesson on the crash course. She emailed it to us at lightandsaltlearning at gmail.com. And you know, this one is from the experience level practice, but it's one of the last problems on the experience level practice and it's pretty darn challenging. It involves a lot of skills. So if you haven't done the slope as a rate of change, lesson, don't start here. Okay, you'd be jumping into the deep end of the pool without learning the doggy paddle. Go back, check out the um, uh, virtual class video first, try the beginning level practice. Don't just jump straight into this or you'll be overwhelmed. But for those of us who are at this level, who are ready to take on a little more challenge, let's take a look. It says, Jeffrey works two jobs each summer to earn money to spend during the school year. Okay, that's nifty. Where's the math? <laughs> the graph below shows the balance of his savings account during the fall semester. Okay, interesting. So here I have a graph. It has something to do with Jeffrey's savings account. So I wonder why this thing doesn't have a title. Well, we can title it. We know this is Jeffrey's savings account. Okay, and let's see what's going on in this graph. So first of all, I see the independent variable along the x-axis, we usually put the independent variable, is months. So yeah, the time, it just moves independently of anything we do. So there are the times just marching along after so many months, and we see something happening. See this line on our graph? His savings is going down as the months progress. Well, that makes sense. If he put it all in his savings during the summer and he spends it all year, we're going to see his savings decrease. And then uh, we see uh, across this vertical axis, up and down axis, the dependent variable. Something depends on these months. As these months progress, it's affecting something. What's it affecting? His account balance. His account balance in dollars is affected by the time that goes on, all right? And so this is the dependent variable. Okay, and I'm stressing these things for a reason, I promise, it's in the question. So, um, and this is pretty normal, guys. Most times, most mathematicians, unless they're just trying to be so super duper tricky, are going to put the independent variable on the horizontal axis, the also called the x-axis, and the dependent variable on the vertical axis, the up and down one, or the y. Okay. Um, so that makes A and B really easy to answer. Hey, it's like I knew this was coming. It's like I wrote the problem. <laughs> so A says, what is the dependent variable? Well, our account balance depends on how many months it's been since, uh, since the semester started. And so the account balance here is the dependent variable. Again, we think of that like a Y. Mathematicians usually call it Y. Scientists call it dependent variable. It's the same idea. What is the independent variable? What's the thing that, you know, is not getting affected, but it's doing the affecting, the thing in control? Well, those are the months. The months are clicking by all on their own, affecting the account balance. So that's like our independent variable, like our X. Okay. Now, it gets a little trickier here. What is the slope of the resultant graph? I have so many students who struggle with slope. So let's take a look at this. We're looking for slope. And what have we been given? We've been given this thing, a picture, a graph. Well, I think the easiest way to find slope off of a graph is simply to count. Uh, to count. Slope is just a measure of steepness. We basically measure how much our graph is rising over how much our graph is running. The, the idea here is how quickly is it rising or falling, okay? And to do that, we make a fraction out of rise over run. Now, careful, this graph isn't really rising. As we just saw, it's falling. So we actually have a negative slope. I'm expecting some kind of negative answer. But, you know, to know exactly what I'm going to have to count. Now, here's a really good rule of thumb. Students ask me all the time, well, where do I start and where do I stop on the line? And the answer is it doesn't really matter. Honestly, you could start at any point on the line and end at any point on the line and you'd get the same slope. That is what a line is defined as, you know, it, it has constant slope. It doesn't matter where you start and stop. The slope is the same. That's why it looks like this. But it's going to be easier if you count it from a perfect corner. 
So I'm looking for something where I can tell exactly where I'm at. Like right here, I can tell exactly where I'm at because that little line is right there on the corner. You know, I'm at zero months, dude has $5,000. Another place, you know, I can't see exactly where I'm at here. It's not perfectly at a corner. Same thing with there, same thing with there. So I, I don't want to have to estimate. It's going to make my answers not so accurate. So I'm going to come over to where I can see another perfect corner right here. Okay. And now I'm going to count my rise as we call it over my run. I wish you guys could see me because I just did air quotations when I said rise, uh, because this is really a fall. I'm really going down here on this graph. So let's see how much did I go down? Well, I'm going down from 5,000 to 2,000. So I went down 1,000, 2,000, 3,000. Okay. So I went down 3,000. That's my rise as we call it. Maybe I should call it a fall, fall over run. <laughs> so negative 3,000. Now my run, how much am I going over? What's my horizontal movement? Now notice these things are labeled differently. This is one from zero to one. There's another one. So be careful. It was marked in thousands on my, um, my Y axis, but on my X axis, it's only marked one month at a time. So this is one, two, three, four. And that's why it becomes super important that you're not the kind of person who just counts boxes. If you to just count boxes here, you would have been in trouble. You'd get a wrong answer because in one case we have thousands. And in the other case, we have a box representing just one. <laughs> okay. So I get negative 3000 over four. Now remember what makes a slope be the same, no matter where I start and stop is because final fraction answers are simplified. So be sure to simplify this as much as possible. Now this one will divide perfectly. Negative 3,000 divides by four. I won't even have a fraction anymore. Negative 3,000 divided by four gives me negative 750. What is the slope of this graph? It is negative 750. Now, I love you guys. I do. I think you're wonderful. But you just give me these random numbers that for you have no meaning. So when I ask you about D, what I'm really trying to get you to do is to think about what the slope means. It has a meaning. We don't just randomly find slope because math teachers like to torture you, okay? It means something. It's a useful number. And what it means is we're looking at a rate of change, how much something is changing. So what do we have changing here? We have our count balance changing over time. What does this mean? This negative 7... 50 means I'm going down, negative means I'm going down, 750, but 750 what? Look back at your unit. What was those numbers up on top that you were dealing with? You know, as we went down here, we were looking at our account balance in dollars. So we're going down $750 and it's a per, it's a rate of change per what? Well, what is my independent variable here? It was months. So what this negative 750 means, it has meaning uh, in Jeffrey's life. It means every month his account goes down another $750. It means that he has a rate of change, his account does, of negative 750. It goes down 750 each month. Okay, wonderful. Let's look at E. At this rate, how much would Jeffrey need to save during the summer to support himself for the nine months of school? Okay, guys, he has to support himself for nine months of school. And each month of school, his account goes down another $750. Well, okay, he's spending $750 per month. So I'm going to take that $750 he's spending per month. You say, why not negative $750? I mean, I suppose you could, but I'm looking at how much I need to put into the savings account. I need to put $750 into the savings account for a month, but I'm not just going to do it for one month, okay? This man needs to live for nine months. And so I'm going to have to do that $750 nine times in order for him to be okay without working during the school year. $750 for each one of those nine months. Whew. Oh, this boy better work. $6,750. And again, you say, well, why isn't negative now? Because I'm talking about how much I want to put into the account. If I want to put it into the account, I want to save it. I'm going to have to save that whole $6,750. And then yes, throughout the school year, it's going to go down. But right now that would be a positive amount. Ooh, tricky, tricky. So much understanding required in this problem. You can see why I said it was complex. Now, there is no way 
I just no way that you're going to just watch me do this one time and then be like, yay, I'm competent for my test. You have got to practice this. There was so much reasoning in this problem that I'm actually feeling a little guilty just for doing it. Okay. So... <laughs> I need you to go practice, guys. So if you haven't checked it out yet, go check out the slope as a rate of change experience level practice. Work through these on your own. Practice identifying dependent and independent variables. Practice finding um, slope from word problems and from graphs and understanding what those slopes mean and then using the results of that slope to, you know, um, find out important information, useful things to know. Um, there's a reason why slope is one of the GED's favorite concepts. Again, it's not to torture you. It's because it comes up so much in life. It is super duper useful. All right. If you have any questions about this or any other GED math concept, uh, be sure to drop it in the comments. I'll do my best to answer it. And hopefully it'll be a shorter, shorter video than this one. <laughs> Happy learning.